when you first start caving and you get into the, the smaller spaces and that, you do feel a bit of claustrophobia, but the more you do it, the more you get used to it, to a point where, you know, unless you're in something really, really tight and you're really, really stuck, then you don't tend to suffer from the claustrophobia so much, so it's just experience, really. And, you know, some people can't get beyond that experience, they just are claustrophobic and there's nothing that's going to change that. And do you have any hairy moments yourself, like...? In, in the diving sort of side of things, yeah, I've had quite a few sort of incidents, but yeah, I'll, I'll put them down to experience and, uh, you know, you get past them and it's a good good experience and it helps you um, progress, really. Yeah, does it help you in, in other things? You, do you, Can you use that sort of, like, calming? Because you must have to, like, calm yourself. Uh, exactly, from, yeah. From the, you know, you, you know the immediate danger, you know, do you, can you apply that? Yeah, exactly as you say there, you've got to have the, you know, the mentality to be able to calm yourself down before you go into that incident pit where you're not going to be able to get back out of it again. And yeah, you can apply that in your, your life, your work situation, whatever. And how did you, you say you started at uh, 17, how did you get into it? So I was at school, Crossland Moor School, and one of my friends, Guy Farmer, he's um, brother-in-law went caving with uh, some of his friends and Guy had been a couple of times and he invited me on one of the trips and the first time I went I just loved it straight away they sort of um, everything about it and that's how I started out as a dry caver um, from 17 till I went to um, Portsmouth Polytechnic joined the caving club down there and continued with the dry caving obviously in different areas throughout the UK and then when I was sort of 19, 20-ish, I started dabbling in the, the cave diving side of things, just doing short dives, and then slowly sort of building my experience up that way. So it, were you a diver anyway? I was never a diver before. I wanted to do cave diving. I wanted to do the cave diving as a progression from the dry caving. So I, I joined a, a BZAC club down south for a short period just to get the basics of, of the actual um, scuba diving. And then once I got that, I took that into my into my sort of caving and taught myself how to cave dive, basically. And you've broken records. <coughs> uh, yeah, it's in northern Spain. The system we've been pushing since two thousand and one, so we've been exploring it, you know, progressing further into into the hillside where it comes out of. And in two thousand and eleven, um, we broke the world record, which is the distance from the entrance to the furthest dive point, which was just over. 8.8 .8 kilometres. Over a period of time, how long does it take to do that? Because obviously you have to you have to go in so far that you know it's safe. Well, we go out there on a say a two or three week expedition, and you, you stage the equipment. So you'll stage the equipment a certain distance into the cave, and then once you get all that there, you move it on to the next stitch. And a bit like climbing Everest or something like that. They have all mm -hmm. the base camps all the way up. They don't just go. Well, most people don't do it in one hit. And it's a similar sort of thing when you're doing a, a big long cave dive. You stage the equipment into the system to say halfway and once everything's say halfway then you'll do a, a push to the end back out again and then strip everything out. Right. I mean if we lived in Spain where this cave was then you, you could do it month on month in month out you could continue doing it but we were just there for a short period of time. Yes and uh, do you have there any other challenges? There's lots of uh, caves all over the world that are unexplored or not even being found yet and that's what we go and do we, uh, we get to the ones that are flooded dive them and hopefully, I mean we don't do it so much to do the diving, we do the diving to pass the flooded section and try and find dry passages beyond. Yeah. That's um, primarily where I'm coming from in cave diving yeah. and there's lots of places like that in the world. Well, what's, uh, what, what's your motivation, your excitement? Uh, is, it, is it just finding something nobody else has found? Yeah, it's just finding that new passage that nobody's been into before and you, you, know, you map it, you survey it as you go and you produce a survey and it's there for you generations to come. But you, you were at uh, the Polytechnic, you said, uh, what uh, course did you do there? So I went to Portsmouth Polytechnic and I did a mechanical engineering degree. So an engineering mechanical background gives a good, um, gives you a good sort of background for making your own stuff. So we construct a lot of our own diving equipment because the stuff that's on the market, or the commercial stuff on the market, is not suitable for what we want to do. It's not rugged enough, it's not tough enough. So we'll get something like um, a water pipe, so for example, that they lay in the road. So that's a tube. Within that tube, we can fill it full of batteries, put a motor on the back, and that is a, an underwater propulsion vehicle that will drive us through the water. So when you're doing eight kilometres of diving and you're not finning, 
you've been dragged through the water by a diver propulsion vehicle, so we make those ourselves because the ones we make are rugged. They're very simple, there's no electronics in them, and if they break down when you're in the system, we can repair them. Yeah. And, and do, you, uh, do you wear a cylinder on your back, or, or, or is there another form of uh, uh, breathing apparatus that you can use? When you're doing short duration dives, simple dives, then you would use uh, scuba cylinders, and in the UK, because the, the cave passages are quite low and mm. small, we use them on the side rather than on the back. But uh, apart from that, it's exactly the same, it's um, called scuba. And the air that you breathe out, it gets expelled into the water. When you want to progress onto longer dives, including you know decompression, and you could be doing dives for 12 hours underwater, you use a thing called a rebreather, and it recirculates the gas. So that gas that you would expel into the water normally gets recirculated around a loop, and then there's a chemical in that loop that takes the carbon dioxide out and then injects a small amount of oxygen back into the the gas, and you can breathe it again indefinitely. And the only thing you have to replenish is a, a small amount of oxygen and you've just got that chemical that has got um, a scrubber life on it.